we have uh, around 140 channels coordinated here for, for everything, for Aeneas, for the microphones we're using here, microphones we're using in the green room, press center, ENG crews and stuff like that. Uh, but the actual usage during show, I would estimate, we will end up around 90 channels or something like that. There's three sets of microphones, basically. So every every country have allowed to have six persons on stage. They have free choice between either using using headsets or using handheld microphones. So that basically means that we have six of each lying there for that country. And for the handhelds, we have have two rotations running, basically. So it's it's. Set A, Set B, that, that keeps changing, and there's a backup set also uh, for for the belt packs because it, it takes a bit longer to mount and stuff, and it's done out backstage. We have three rotations going going for them. It's one of the advantages of the Digital 9000 is we don't have to, to coordinate intermodulation, so we can do equidistant spacing. So basically it's just a matter of scanning it, finding the best blocks of 24 megahertz, and then just placing the channels in there on the, the, the most noise-free frequencies. So, so that's been a lot easier. Uh, Inia, of course, needed some space, and, 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 and there's a quite a lot of noise in that, which is a lower part of the UHF range. Uh, but I mean, with the antenna positioning we have there and the, and the transmitting power we're using, we can easily overcome that. But I mean, it's frequency coordination is also something that, that needs to go quite a lot of con consideration into. Uh, if you do a scan outside of the arena, you will see that there's 20 occupied TV channels, so that's 20 times 8 megahertz that we cannot use and are not allowed to use because of that, basically. And then in here, we, we have maybe another 50 megahertz or so that is that is occupied by noise by all the different uh, uh, units in here. So, so we have to, to work our way around that to, to, to fit in all the frequencies we need to, to, to use. Well, there's a sound quality advantage, uh, first, first of all. Uh, then we have some, some other RF technical stuff that basically, as RF drops, we still have perfect uh, sound quality going through the system to, directly until it, it basically mutes. Uh, but as we can work with such a low carrier to interference as we can on, on, on this system, we have a very, very good range on, on it. And, uh, well, we've done some AB tests here as well, also, and people seem to really like it. We have some ENG crews that are allowed to be here, uh, doing behind the scenes footage and, and, and stuff like that. And then we have all the unauthorized ENG crews that are being told very strictly not to use any wireless, but still we have caught, I think, now 35 or something within the past week where we have had press here. <coughs> so, yeah, a lot of the time goes, of course, looking into the system, checking that everything is okay. And then we're also hunting the ENG crews all the time, both here and, and over in the press center. Inia is being fed over from the monitor wall, which is over here on stage right. Uh, we're shooting 16 channels of Inia, and we're shooting it from that location because basically the monitor engineers wanted the transmitters close by them so they could see the actual meters on the transmitters. And it actually turned out to be a very good position because we are mounting all the Inia belt packs backstage. So we can basically shoot at the gate that is going to the backstage area and therefore also hitting that, that uh, area where they are all the in-ear packs are being mounted and the earbuds and stuff. So that means they get full coverage from they get the in-ear mounted basically and therefore can feel confident that, that the sound will be there when they go on stage. Uh, for the first rehearsal they have on stage here, uh, they have before that been into a, a, uh, another room we had out back, which was simply a sound check room where we had a complete setup with the same stuff, Midas XL8, same microphones, same in and stuff, so they could do the rehearsal out there, get the in mix fixed before they came on stage where they have to concentrate on the choreography, camera angles, where to look and all that stuff. So uh, so that, that makes it a lot safer for them when they get these first, I think, was first rehearsal 40 minutes or something, that the in mix is already basically settled. Uh, between every playthrough of the song, we then have a monitor liaison who comes on stage, talks to the artist and communicates directly with them face to face instead of just someone sitting from monitor world talking over the the, the years. So, so it's a per personal conversation. Is everything okay? Do we need to change something in your mix going through all the six artists? And then the, the, the guys at monitor world can then correct the, the changes because obviously standing in a small dressing room out back here is a bit different than coming in here with the PA playing and stuff and all the ambience going on. So, but still, the, the, the actual changes that had to be made here has been quite minute. We usually have the LED wall, then we know this is our source of, of, of noise, basically. In here, it's just the sum of all the, the equipment. We have some of the cameras that are a bit noisy. We have some uh, 
uh, SDI to HDMI converters that are also quite noisy and stuff. But otherwise, there is just a lot of interferences going on, and also some wideband noises that are just we can't locate them because it's just the sum of, of yeah, 900 moving heads or whatever is hanging up there. Oh, projectors haven't actually made any RF noise, but they have a tendency of singing at 5.5 kilohertz, and that's very nice standing next to them. And it goes into the microphones and through the in so they have to notch it out and stuff. And they come in and tweak the water pump in the projectors to make it stop singing. Most of the LED walls, they make like a, a fixed space and carrier throughout the entire spectrum, and then you can just coordinate RF around that. Yeah. Uh, one thing you could say that by using the, the digital 9000 system here has made some of the frequency coordination a lot easier because we don't have to do intermod calculations because of the linearity of the system. So uh, uh, normally we, we calculate a frequency plan for whatever we need and then maybe calculate 10, 15, 20 spare frequencies. That, so if we have an interference on one frequency, we have to choose one of the, the spare frequencies. Here we can just simply select a new frequency without thinking about the coordination within, within the entire set. So, so basically setting up the, the, the microphone part has been uh, a lot easier than, than we normally have, despite all the, the noise sources. Here.